So this is for our um, What If blog series and um, for those of you tuning in for the first time, these are, these are just little videos. Um, we usually connect it to some, some of uh, Stuart's writing and we um, explore possibilities uh, thinking outside the box. And today we're going to play a little bit um, with uh, the work you've been doing lately around understanding math and the relationship to self-reg, self-regulation, and uh, in particular in the, you know, the JK to grade six years, but uh, we'll connect this to the Your Psychology Today blog series. There's three blogs you've been writing on this. But I want to play with the scenario of what if, recognizing that there are limits out, I'm just asking you to put aside some thinking about how things need to be done just for a few moments and let's, let's play with possibilities. What if we could put aside curriculum right now as it stands, um, I'm thinking of Ontario but anywhere, uh, and replace it with a different approach to math. What, what would that be from a self reg lens and from the research you've been doing recently? Uh, well, it would be transformational. Um, I had a very interesting experience with my daughter just a couple of days ago. Uh, so my daughter has always been a whiz in math. And all of a sudden, she's been struggling this year. And you know, I was trying to figure out what was going on. And it was clear that uh, um, there was a certain tempo, a uh, pace to the math class. and. You know, she'd fallen just a little bit behind and then mm -hmm. it got worse and worse and she got more and more tense. Anyway, so I'm working on all this and uh, trying to help her through this. And uh, later the same day, um, she was um, playing around and she was doing, playing with numbers. Uh, but she wasn't doing it. She didn't realize it was math. <laughs> she didn't realize it was math. Yeah, yeah. It was one of these puzzle things and it was a lot of fun. And I was looking at this and I was thinking, well, what if that was my starting point? Like, what if my starting point, I, I just read this book by, what's his name, Strogatz, um, The Joy of X. Mm -hmm. It's a fabulous book. And I thought, well, what if that was my starting point in teaching math, that this really is an incredibly enriching experience. And I'm going to give you some tools so that you really can enjoy this, that this is a deeply fulfilling. And what would it look like? Um, it sure wouldn't look like what my daughter's doing right now. We, you know, you, you speak about this idea of the joy of it and the yeah. language of it in, I think it's your first, your first of the three blogs. And it, it got me thinking when I was reading that about how, um, I mean, we've seen this happen with reading too. We've yes. seen situations yes, where, right. where right. it's a problem where people have taken all the joy out of absolutely reading. Right. And we've also seen some really good stuff happen in reading where, where many educators and parents get that, um, you know, that it, it's for pleasure and, and how we engage and it really makes a difference in trying to find the balance in that. And we don't see it as much in math. Math seems to raise up the, the whole bunch of shoulds and, you know, that this anxiety and getting away from that joy. Yep. I remember when I was in school, so math was one of my favorite subjects. Um, and it has to be because the very first math teacher I can remember, and it was around grade five, um, it was all about, uh, we were doing primes. And it was, it was just fun, and it was trying to think this stuff through and how weird it was. Um, and, you know, one of the things that has always just amazed me when I think about math is that I can go off and do stuff in my head, and I can make up stuff, and, mm -hmm. and, and it actually is useful. Um, <laughs> you know, this is really, really yeah. something to wonder yeah. about. And I think, you know, one of the points I made in the blogs is... It was, you know, for when we do paleoanthropology, uh, one of the things we look at is what a momentous event it was in human evolution when humans or ancient hominids first invented the concept of number. I mean, mm -hmm. it's, it was huge, the terms of cognitive efficiency and economy. Um, and we totally lost sight of that when we are teaching young children that this was a huge developmental leap for our species. It is a huge developmental leap for our child. And it's not something to be rushed through. It's not a, it's not like, you know, you've got, you've got 50 things you've got to learn mm -hmm. in order to be um, prepared to learn the next 50 things next year, whatever. No, these are huge steps in the growth of a mind. And once we begin to think about that and how math fuels the growth of a mind, then we see this as you know, it's momentous. It's something mm -hmm. to be celebrated. 
So how do we deal with the anxiety that comes for the child, but I would say also the teacher with all yeah. of the focus now on That's math great scores. And, and again, the parent, when we have this sense that our child is behind in some way, how do we actually... Great what if question, eh? What, what do we do? How, how can we reframe that? What, can, what, what should we be doing? What should we be focusing on? Uh, asking those questions, right? So those are, that's just awesome. And, you know, as we look at the data, um, what we see is, A, we're not doing so great. Mm -hmm. uh, so every, it, it seems like every new testing cycle, our kids have done a little bit worse, mm -hmm. but our anxiety is going up. And so at what point do you say, this would be a good topic for what if? What if, uh, what if we didn't worry about competing uh, on the PISA stage? Mm -hmm. what, if, what if instead we said, you know, let's go back now to our most fundamental assumptions about what we're trying to accomplish here and what kinds of gifts we are trying to nurture uh, as opposed to um, a mindset which is, as you just said, uh, engendering so much anxiety in parents and educators and everyone. Uh, at the end of the day, it's one of those areas where you want to say, well, how's that working for you? And then a developmental lens, because as yeah. soon as you get told you're behind, everybody, you know, they, it, it, it's, it's a problem, right? And I mean, I even wonder about you what... Know, you know, I have a case, I have a son. Can I talk about my son here? Yes, you can. Okay, so I have a son who became very, very math phobic, like yes. incredibly math phobic. This is tough for me because, you know, my PhD is in philosophy of mathematics. Yeah. So, you know, how can I have a math phobic son? Uh, and that's probably part of the problem, right? Uh, un mm -hmm. un unintentionally, I had put too much pressure on him. But uh, he was really, really struggling. And so what we did was we completely changed the dynamics about how we would help him master math. And the starting point was it had to be paced, it had to be in a quiet environment, it had to be with someone that he trusted that made him feel safe and secure. But here's the kicker. Okay, so not only did he begin to do well, he's mm -hmm. starting to do really well, but he comes home a couple of weeks ago and tells me, I had the best day ever. And so, okay, why is that? So he's got a new girlfriend. You don't yeah. know about her yet. I, I've heard. <laughs> so he said, today I got to teach uh, Lucia how to do this in math. Wow. So, yeah, I mean, it was really But weird. we get back to the joy. The joy. The back to the joy of it. And, and the children are where they are. And, yeah. you know, and then I think that also goes to self reg and looking at all of those ex yes. extra stressors. We think what we're seeing has to do with intelligence or that, that idea of, this Love is it. all they know, Love but it. what else could be blocking what's possible? So one of the things, themes that we stress in, in self-reg is that there are these negative stressors. Yes. And too often what we hear is, well, we have to eliminate, you know, from people that are just coming into self-reg is how do I eliminate the negative stress? But really what we want to know is can I transform the negative stress into a positive stress? Mm -hmm. uh, and you know, to eliminate the negative stress would be, well, let's not make them do math. But what we want is we want this to become a positive stress. And a positive stress is one which is not just arousing in a positive way, but promotes growth. And what's phenomenal about this topic is the growth here isn't simply a cognitive growth. I can do something, but it's emotional. It's psychological. <laughs> it's we need to become emotionally connected to the love of math. I kind of like that. I'm, I'll have to do a little more work on it. But uh, So that's our what if. We like to play with possibilities. I think it's a really important takeaway. And if you'll read Stuart's three blogs on this, and you'll see that he leads you through where we just began, which is talking about the joy of math. Um, but also right through to some very concrete things that you can do. Yeah, to, there are things we can do. Very concrete things that you can do to, to help yourself, help your child, um, in, in the classroom, and, and, uh, and we wish you luck with that.